الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته ويلكم تو ار رمضان سيريز كونتمبليتينغ ذا قران باي الشيخ احمد سعد الغزري الحمد لله وذ ذا توفيق اوف الله ذس ويل بي ذا لاست بارت ذس از بارت 30 جزء نمبر 30 ان ويتش وي ار لوكينغ ات ذا ثيمز اوف ذا قران and this consists of chapters al al naba to al nas and the theme or the dominant idea that the sheikh professes for us uh, in this final juz is the message the approaching hour and the ascent of man the rising of man so the message it's it's uh, it's it's a comprehensive uh, theme the message the approaching hour and the ascent of man so it's a conclusion and the conclusion comes uh, with the ending uh, appropriately with the ending of the world with the approaching hour and the ascent of man so bismillah rahman rahim uh, the sheikh begins by telling us this part commences with a rhetorical question about questioning a rhetorical question about questioning one that disavows those who disavow the coming resurrection and mockingly call for it to be hastened verse number 2 chapter number 78 so there were those who would deny the resurrection and would mock the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and call for it to be hastened call for the uh, resurrection to be hastened god invites them to wait till it occurs when its reality will be revealed to them and mankind will be divided into two groups each one en- encountering the consequences of their actions either everlasting bliss or an eternity of hellfire so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says because although they wanted they wanted hasten allah says uh, wait for it to occur and its re- uh, reality will be revealed and there will be two groups then when the, when the, when the resurrection occurs one uh, which will be in 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 hellfire and one which will have eternal bliss bliss in the paradise of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this uh, chapter we find a directive to ask beneficial questions and guidance towards two of the many paths to acquiring knowledge one being practical advice regarding diligent observance of nature and the other by being way by way of analogy and imagination so there there are two paths to acquiring knowledge and we are asked uh, there is uh, we, we are we are encouraged to ask beneficial questions with regards to these paths or beneficial questions that lead upon these paths uh one is the the uh diligent observe observation of nature observing nature or not and the other by being uh, a way of analogy and imagination observe the nature and also be imaginative the chapter al uh, al naziyat continues this theme emphasizing the utter consternation of those who deny resurrection when it actually befalls they will encounter not but the harvest of what they reaped and will regret eternally when finally their eyes open so again it's it's about this chapter uh, al al naziyat is about the deniers of the resurrection and what they will encounter uh, when when they see it when they will have regret in their lives the chapter uh, abasa holds off on discussing the nature of prophethood and exposing the lies of those who disbelieve in it until it too makes uh, mention of the approaching hour which it names al al saqa that which will shatter eardrums deafening them to the cries of their brothers children spouses and parents for for on that day a person will be oblivious to all but their own state so again this idea of resurrection is continued and it is given a name which means that which will shatter eardrums sound al saqa it will shatter eardrums it will make them deaf to what their what the people around them their loved ones are are calling out for but they will have nothing but their own state to face the chapter al uh, al taqwir connects this state of affair to the tremendous up upturning of nature that all creation will experience the sun's furnace being extinguished the immovable mountains being uprooted and scattered those long dead being resurrected and so forth so this is again we are being we are being told about the the day of the day of resurrection and the terrors that will accompany it that everything that we see around us the uh, what we are used to uh, seeing in nature will all be turned upside down um, immovable mountains been uprooted and scattered so all all as a prelude to this great gathering and standing before god this will be uh, uh, this will come as something before uh, the great gathering similarly in the chapter 
chapter al in in uh, al infitar we see the heavens previously placid being violently torn asunder the stars previously fixed in their constellations being scattered hither and thither and burial places casting forth their inhabitants so the whole thing there'll be there'll be a state of chaos and and upheaval uh we have heavens being torn asunder we have uh, stars uh, being rendered out of their fixed constellations being being scattered everywhere and the burial places creating forth or bringing forth casting forth their inhabitants all of creation will thus find itself in an entirely disordered disordered state of affairs as they stand ready for the establishment of the scales of balance on the day when true justice will be done the wicked bound to sijin the righteous raised to illiyin so this is the this is the state of the of 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 creation just before they 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 assemble before their lord uh and and before the scales are brought about for the, for justice to be done and then we are told such is the spectacle witnessed in the chapter al uh, in shikaq we behold the righteous in a state of joy and happiness whilst the unrighteous are cast into a blazing fire pleading for their own destruction so this is these are the two groups the the righteous will be happy and joyous on that day and the unrighteous are will will be will be cast into a blazing fire the chapter al buruj gives a grave admonition about both arrogantly turning away from truth and hindering others from it proffering the example of the people of the trench whom god destroyed and promised a fiery punishment in recompense for their similar immolation of the believers so uh when you are arrogant when you turn away from the truth and you hinder others uh, away from it that is that is calling upon yourself the destruction of god the following chapters continue to lay bare for us the nature of man and his destiny that he is on the return journey to his lord before whom he will have neither strength nor assistance as described in the chapter uh, at tariq so this our ultimate journey is to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we as as from from the time that we are born it is a countdown to when we are going to return uh, to him the chapter al ala clarifies both the true nature of the message as well as the meanings as well as the means of benefiting from it through veneration and humility with the result that the status of man is elevated in the world and on the day of judgment in eternal gardens as described in the chapter al ghashia so uh, the status of man or the the nature of the message is that it 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 calls for veneration and humility it calls for a veneration and humility towards it and then uh, when you do that when you have that inculcated inside of you then man is elevated in this world and on the day of judgment and he will live in eternal gardens the chapter al fajr proceeds to deliver a warning against following the ways of such evil doers as the folk of iram thamud pharaoh and they like ex- exhorting them instead to walk in the footsteps of the righteous that people might witness the end result of their actions on the day of judgment and enter the garden in a state of utter tranquility well pleasing and well pleased again as is the is the, is the nature of the quran we are given examples of destruction of the people of iram thamud and pharaoh and that those are the people that we should they we should not walk in their footsteps but we should walk rather in the footsteps of the righteous which will bring about our success in in the world to come the chapter al balad makes clear that it is god who shows people paths of goodness and evil gives them ownership of the faculty of reflection such that they will be asked about their choices in the final reckoning of matters we are given faculties of reflection we are given faculties like we discussed before and we will ask the choices that we made in regard uh, and and as a consequence of those faculties it also cl- clarifies that Uh, that what will assist a person in choosing the right way is the purification and cleansing of the soul from all manner of impurities and ailments we come to the level of the soul that what will assist us in then gain, gaining success is our purification of this soul and our cleansing of it as further explained in the opening verse of chapter al shams which together comprise the most extensive oath sworn by god in the quran the chapters al duha al al shar Al-Tin and Al-Alaq in form of the noble messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam whom God selected whom he nurtured under his loving gaze and and whose breast he expanded 
the, the qualities of the Prophet وسلم, or his selection by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being highlighted here and how he was nurtured by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala under his loving gaze and how his breast was expanded. He brought him forth in the most perfect of models within a secure land, taught him and made him the means of his delivery of the message, one of knowledge and recitation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings him forth, brings his messenger forth as the best of models for us for us as a guidance and he brought him up in a secure land and taught him and made him means as, as a means of delivery for his message. The chapters Al-Qadr and Al-Bayyina tell of the reality of this message which descended in its entirety on the night of power. It is of a tremendous rank for it is an exhaustive compendium of God's commands and his guidance. Now from the person of the Prophet وسلم, we come to the reality of the message that he came with which came down on the night of power. And its rank, it's of a tremendous rank and it's a compendium, beautifully explained as a compendium of God's commands and his guidance. So his commands and his guidance, that is, that is the summary of what the book of Allah is about. They further inform that the disbelievers and the people of the book will persist in their rejection of it and they disbelieve in the messenger وسلم, who came to them reciting scriptures pure and holy. The disbelievers will keep on resist, uh, will, will keep on rejecting. They will persist in their rejection. There is the rejection is of a messenger who came to them reciting scriptures pure and holy. The scriptures are pure and holy. He recited these scriptures upon them, but they still persist in rejecting. The chapters Al Zalzala, Al Adiyat, Al Qariya, and Al Taqathur return to the theme of the manifestation of the realities of all things that will occur on the day of judgment. Now we are going into the day of judgment. We're going towards the end. And that is befitting of going towards the end of the Quran. And we are shown the, the manifestations of the realities on that day. The remaining chapters of this part devote themselves to explaining some of the factors that prevent man from attaining deliverance for his own soul. Again, there are reasons for man uh, rejecting the truth and these are presented again in the, in, in the remainder of the chapters. These include falling into sin, greed for wealth and status, becoming distracted with one's appetites and a lack of willingness to sacrifice, whether materially or metaphorically as described in the chapters Al-Asr, Al-Asr, al humaza Al al Al-Fil, Quraysh and Al-Ma'un. So what is it that keeps man away? Uh, from attaining this deliverance, from attaining this salvation, it is what has been explained to us in the previous Jews, in the previous chapters as well. It is a greed for wealth. It is falling into sin, persistently falling into sin, uh, distracting, being distracted by one, one's own appetites. Where do these appetites come from? Like we explained previously, from our lowly desires, from our nafs, from a lack of willingness to sacrifice. Finally, the chapters al kawthar and Al-Nasr give glad tidings of triumph and the attainment of great good, commanding man to hold fast to God and adhere to the affirmation of his oneness. As per the chapters Al-Ikhlas, while seeking protection with God from the evil of every evildoer and the schemes of every plotter. Again, as is the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the admonition, with the, with the warnings, we have glad tidings. Glad tidings of, of success, of triumph, of attaining great good commanding man to hold fast to God and adhere to the affirmation of his oneness. When you do that, when you, when you adhere to the affirmation of his oneness, you will seek and when you seek the protection of Allah from the evil of every evildoer and schemes of every plotter, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection is, is near. And then there is gl glad tidings of success. Success not only in this world and in the hereafter. Alhamdulillah, this has been the explanation. The, theme, the thematic explanation of the Quran as provided to us in contemplating the Quran by Sheikh Ahmad uh, Saad Al-Azari. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a complete understanding, opens our hearts to the light of the Quran, opens our hearts to the themes of the Quran, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us of those who adhere to his teachings, who stay close to his, uh, to his commands, who are people who we that he makes us people who are who stay away from his prohibitions and who hasten in doing the good who hasten in fulfilling his commands that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us people who have the, the the sacred law the sharia as our yardstick as our guiding principle and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the tawfiq to follow his deen to to be able to implement it 
in the way that the best of creation, the Khairul Bariya, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, our guide, our teacher, our leader, the way in which he uh, exhibited his, his adherence to Islam, the way in which he was an exemplar, may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala give us the tawfiq uh, to follow his example and may he make us of those who are successful in this world, who are felicitous in the world to come, who have the companionship of those who are the righteous, of those who are the martyrs, of those who are the messengers. And may he give us the companionship of the Prophet ﷺ in the Akhirah with our families, with our loved ones. And may we be of those who are pleased with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided us. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.